so I just basically read what it has to do with uh, the definition of surveillance capitalism, its genesis according to J.B. Foster and according to Robert McChesney. I think there's a lot of particular findings and interesting information that repercutes in our daily lives as we speak as of 2022. Let's have really quick and, and brief um, definitions of these four forms of capitalism and what we understand of uh, capitalism through this presentation, okay? So, uh, what is capitalism? According to Rosser and Rosser, it is uh, an economic system based on uh, two sides, uh, labor and capital ownership. These two combined can generate products and services um, in order to produce profit for the capitalists, in order to produce profits for the one or the ones who own or, in, or, or have inherited uh, uh, the means uh, of production. That, that's basically the idea. Um, some of the general characteristics include capital accumulation, we, we can have more money after time goes by, uh, we can set the price, we can configure the markets, we own um, intellectual property, and we determine as capitalists, well, not me, but the capitalist uh, owner, owners, uh, they can even determine how much do people have to uh, receive a income for their uh, labor. What is monopoly capitalism according to, uh, as we read, well, as I read before, according to J.B. Foster, according to Machesny, Suisi and Baran, which is a quote we're uh, seeing right now. Uh, I'm going to make a parenthesis in here. Suisi and Baran were founders to a monthly review magazine, which was later uh, directed by J.B. Foster, I think it was like almost for two decades, so there were huge, huge inspiration for these two authors. So monopoly capitalism has to do with uh, Martian theory uh, and it makes this assumption. A competitive economy is associated to giant corporations and they basically determine how they can accumulate capital, how they can produce capital, and all the power is concentrated in few companies, not in a whole lot of, of uh, companies, but in, in such a few monopolistic sort of oligarchic companies. That's uh, how can we understand, like, in such general way, uh, monopoly capitalism. I recommend, I highly recommend you guys read the book by Suisi and Baran, which is a uh, correspondent in interchange uh, between these two fellas. So it's really, really interesting to understand that. So um, we have some of um, these examples. Uh, if we speak about tech companies, of course, we, we can speak about uh, the ones I've mentioned before. But, for example, in China, state-owned companies or state-operated uh, companies such as Alibaba, Tencent, Huawei, um, ByteDance Limited, uh, they pose really a role into the monopoly capitalism as we can understand it uh, today, nowadays. What is cultural capitalism? Uh, it is a construct proposed by Pierre Bourdieu in the 1970s, in the 1977 uh, more specific. And it speaks to the ways in cultural aesthetics such as dress, as language, as um, textile, as rites and rituals, art, intellect, uh, sociocultural production, etc. Um, of the dominant class is being taken as the right way to do, to to do things, to learn things, to 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 say things. For example, nowadays we have in continental America, in the Americas, as the United States uh, and as the Americans say, uh, we have this language uh, imperialism, which is uh, using English 
as a, as a form of way or, or as a form of mean to express ideas. For example, here in Mexico, we use a lot uh, of English-based uh, phrases, English-based ideas, even though our uh, national language is Spanish, and we have a lot of different uh, different languages around uh, 400 uh, languages, dialect uh, that are that are recognized, but we choose to speak in English. That's language imperialism, and that it was imposed. Uh, by the United States as, as a worldwide dominant strategy and we people don't necessarily know that that's happening all right so this is cultural capitalism according to Pierre Bourdieu uh, construct um, created in the 1970s finally a very brief 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 definition again of what is surveillance capitalism I'm gonna read it it says an economic system centered around the commodification of personal data with the core purpose of profit making. A scheme in where human liberty, autonomy and well-being is put in danger. Here I'm quoting, uh, I'm referring to, referencing, I'm sorry, uh, Joshan Zuboff and um, Foster and McChesney. I think if we stick with uh, Zuboff's definition, that's going to work pretty fine because she's the one who has been more famous uh, at the end of their road okay so this is surveillance capitalism and in, in this is a really interesting slide uh, the one we're seeing right now uh, some ways to generate and collect data I'm putting just information that comes uh, from uh, 4G, 5G connected cell phones, 4G, 5G connected uh, tablets, for example, or laptops also. So they hold at least 14, 14 ways of collecting our data. I'm going to mention just a few. For example, the Bluetooth, Bluetooth antenna, the Wi-Fi antenna, the virtual keyboard. Almost no uh, tablet or cell phone has physical keyboard, so it's easier for them to collect our information through the virtual keyboards. Uh, nowadays, cell phones hold at least, uh, for example, three, four cameras. So uh, there's a lot of ways that we are giving our data for free and we're paying for that. Uh, that's ironic, but, but we, we're paying for that. So again, I'm, I'm asking these questions. What do transformers have to do with surveillance capitalism and how is the United States Army and General Motors, uh, sorry, how are United States Army, General Motors and transformers related? Well, United States Army is one of the biggest spenders in Hollywood. They spend a lot of money, they put their money in the, in the um, war-related movies, in the army-related movies, and Transformers, they hold a lot of money that came from the United States government, specifically from the U.S. Army. So basically, uh, Transformers is a state-sponsored film which helps uh, preserve and diffuse um, cultural capitalism, hegemonic cultural capitalism from the United States. All right, so uh, here we have the same slide, the same meme we saw at the beginning, and we know now why it's sort of funny, but it's hugely wrong. Because tech companies don't spy on us. They give us their channels, such as web pages, platforms, apps, um, and we, get, we, we give them our data. That, that's a, a simple as that. Google don't, do, do not spy on us, Facebook do not spy on us, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, etc. They do not spy on us. We are allowing them to gather our data through their apps, their uh, web pages, their platforms, and of course, nobody reads, no fucking body reads uh, terms and conditions, okay? And it has become really, really interesting how uh, 
data specificity has become nowadays. For example, here I put a screen capture about an app that collects your data while you sleep. It's not while you're awake, it's not while you're using your cell phone, it's while you're sleeping. You're allowing them f uh, for data collection through or regarding how many farts you have through the night, how many times you snored, how many times you spoke, how many times you ghost talked. Why do people in the industry, in the technological industry, care about how many times an individual farts while they sleep? Well, it's money. After all, it's money, okay? Uh, later, they can sell you through pharmaceuticals, through hospitals, treatments for uh, solving your farting issue while, we, while you sleep. Anyway. So uh, I'm gonna make a small pause in here in order to, to have a quick recap. These are the eight basic uh, points that are present in Foster's uh, text. Um, and if you're watching this as a scholar, as, a, as an academic, uh, you can work with uh, your alumni regarding two questions. They're appropriate to do these two questions at this time. What do you or your alumni uh, remember about the reading? What is the most interesting or revelating information? At this point, I usually use a video which is uh, easily uh, to be found on, on, the, on YouTube, Speaking uh, Devil. Uh, it has to do with a journalist called uh, Marta Peirano, which is one of my favorite authors. 